Right, so let's dive in and take a quick tour around Logic. I've loaded up a project so you can see what some of this stuff looks like when it's in use. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, I just want to give you a general idea of the layout and what each section of the interface broadly does. There's quite a lot to take in, so don't worry if you don't remember everything first time. We'll be going back to all of these areas in more detail later. This large central section is called the Arrange Area because it's where you'll bring all of your ideas together into complete arrangements, in other words, into complete pieces of music. It displays a vertical list of the tracks in your project here on the left-hand side. Each track has what's called a header. We're going to look at all the features of tracks shortly, but for now it's enough to know that each track plays a series of sounds from left to right. And you can play as many tracks as you like simultaneously. When you press play, the playhead will play each chunk of audio or MIDI data as it reaches it. And these chunks are known in Logic as regions. You can apply different treatments and effects to each of your tracks to shape the sounds on them. And that's possible because each track has its own customizable set of tools and effects which can be viewed at the left hand side of the screen in the inspector. The inspector gives you information about the currently selected track and region and it allows you to make changes to the way the sound is played. At the top is the Region Inspector, which slides up and down when you click it. And next is the Track Inspector, which does the same. Both of these contain fairly advanced options, which we'll look at later. For now though, you don't really need to know anything about these to begin making music. Much more important is the section below. These two vertical sections are known as Channel Strips and these contain tools that allow you to modify the sound's playback. For example, you can change volume, or the sound's position in the stereo field, and you can add effects plugins. There are other options here too as well, but we're going to look at those in detail later on. This left-handmost channel strip always reflects the track selected in the Arrange page as you can see by the matching labels. The channel strip at the right, however, can change. Generally, it allows easy access to channel strips that are relevant to the signal chain of the currently selected track in the arrange area. We're going to look at this in more detail later, but note for now at the moment that it represents bus 48, because that's the next destination of the sound from this track. Making changes to these channel strips is one of the most common tasks you'll do when making music, and often you'll want access to all of your channel strips, not just the one of the currently selected track. For that purpose, there's the mixer. Click the mixer tab at the bottom of the arrange area to bring it up, or if you're a fan of keyboard shortcuts, you can hit the letter X to toggle it. As you can see, we can now see the channel strips for all of our tracks, and we can make changes to them to balance sounds in the mix. If you want to get a good mix, you're probably going to be spending lots of time in this window. By the way, if you prefer a separate window for the mixer, that's easy to do. Just choose Window and then Mixer. Or you can hit the shortcut Command and 2. Logic's display is extremely flexible, so you can set it up however you prefer to work. Next along in this list of tabs is the sample editor. This is where you'll want to go if you want to get your hands dirty and make changes to actual audio files. It's important to note that while you can make some changes to audio files in the arrange page, such as chopping them up and rearranging the parts, there are some audio tasks which can only be done in this window. Next up we've got the piano roll. This is where we go to edit MIDI data. 
If I was using a software instrument, such as a software synthesizer, I'd use this panel to tell it which notes to play. There are two more tabs down here. One is for viewing and editing MIDI as a score for the classically trained among you. The other, the hyper editor, is for advanced MIDI editing, but we're not going to look at it in these tutorials because most of its functions can also be accessed from the piano roll in a more friendly format. I rarely use it personally. At the right hand side we've got two possible sidebars, each with their own set of tabs, which are accessed by clicking the lists and media buttons. We're not going to go into detail here, but generally the Lists tab allows you to see and edit the data that is contained in your arrangement, such as MIDI events, tempo changes, time signatures and markers. Each of these has a more graphical interface elsewhere in Logic, but this tab allows you to see them and manipulate them in pure data terms. It's like a spreadsheet for your music. The Media sidebar deals with getting sound into your projects, managing it while it's there, and also managing preset sound templates, both those that ship with Logic and your own custom saved ones. For example, if you've installed any of the Logic Jam Packs, you can access the Apple loops that they include and drag them into your tracks. The transport controls are where the buttons for playing back, stopping and recording your tracks live. The transport bar also provides you with information about your position and timing in the tracks. The timer at the left here tells you your position in seconds and minutes through the arrangement, and also your position in beats and bars. Then comes information about the position of your locators, which are these green markers at the top. Then the tempo, the time signature, MIDI data that's coming into and out of Logic, and finally the amount of CPU processing being used and the hard drive access. Of course this bottom bar is totally customizable. By right clicking and choosing Customize Transport Bar, you can choose what is and what is not displayed here. If you're not using something, it's often a good idea to get rid of it to decrease visual clutter. Finally, at the top of the screen, there's a customizable toolbar for doing things within the arrange area. You should leave this at its default to start with, but as you begin to realize what tasks you do most often, you should right click and customize the toolbar to load it up with quick shortcuts to the tasks that you're doing most often. So that completes our tour. We're going to have a quick look at the transport controls now so that we can easily navigate through our project.